In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the rear wheel cylinder on this Toyota Tacoma. It's located behind your drum brakes, we're going to have to take the shoes apart, so let's install this TRQ wheel cylinder. To remove these wheels, if you have these caps, you can take a pry bar or a little screwdriver and just pop them off so that you can use a regular size socket. Otherwise, you'll need a, a thin wall socket to get in between the caps. So you can, you can leave this on, but you might need a thin wall socket. At this point, use a 21 millimeter and remove all five of the log nuts. Remove the wheel. Next step is to remove the drum. A lot of times it'll seize onto the hub or the, the center bore of the hub face here and to try to prevent that or at least try to free it up a little. I'm going to take a wire brush and scrub it. Looks like there's anti-seize residue here so someone's been in here before and I'm hoping this will come off with ease but a little bit of help will make our job a lot easier. I'm also going to hit it with some uh, rust penetrant a little bit. Now you also have two holes here that are threaded. 8 by one25 is the thread pattern. So if you need to, you can stick two bolts in here that'll pry it off. But you also want to make sure that the shoes aren't stuck onto the drum or that there isn't a huge lip on it. A lot of times you can go in from the backside. I'll show you exactly how in a little bit, but you can contract the shoes. Looks like this one, by wiggling it, is coming off. It came off about halfway. I'm just going to work it back and forth. Sometimes it takes quite a bit of back and forth before you can pull these off. But it is free. It's not stuck on the shoes. Otherwise I would hear it and it's not seized on the hub. Otherwise it wouldn't even move. I'll just try to go back and forth. There it is. I like to spray everything down with brake parts cleaner before disassembling anything when it comes to drum brakes because there's a lot of brake dust involved and I don't want to breathe uh, this in. Obviously stay away from the fumes of this too, but it will basically just go if you don't clean it off. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to expand the adjuster push the shoes out on the top. That should allow the shoes to release pressure off of the wheel cylinder. Obviously don't go out until this whole thing separates. Just go out, uh, I don't know, most of the way. So that, that should give us plenty of room to work with without disassembling anything. I'm gonna stop right about there. Now, if, if one side goes out further than the other, you can just tap on them and also the wheel cylinder will expand as you push this out but you know if you push it in the little pins will recontract. Next I sprayed all of this with some rust penetrant because it is very rusty and I'm going to crack the bleeder screw open. That is so I can push the brake pedal down. I'll show you exactly how to do this and once you leave the brake pedal pressed all the way down the brake master cylinder will actually restrict all the brake fluid flow out of this, so take a 10 millimeter wrench, try to crack it free. A lot of times these get stuck. I'm actually gonna put a socket on it because it's a six point socket, whereas a 12 point wrench could potentially strip this out. So I'm gonna try to work it back and forth here. Give it a couple taps. Oh, looks like it just broke free. Perfect. Yep, we got brake fluid coming out. So at this point, let's go inside the vehicle, press down on that brake pedal. And once the brake pedal is down, yes, fluid will come out as you press it. But once it's down on the ground and the pry bar is stuck in there, no more fluid will come out after that. So we have more time to work. Put the pry bar on the brake pedal, press the brake pedal down and push the seat forward to hold that pry bar in place. Now it's time to break free this brake line, which may or may not break free. It's uh, already been soaking in oil, but sometimes what happens is it gets stuck inside the fitting uh, where the line seizes onto the fitting and then it wants to spin the entire line. If it does spin the entire line, I'm just going to pull these two bolts off, pull the wheel cylinder out and unthread the cylinder off of the fitting instead of the line off of the wheel cylinder. Uh, but hopefully for you, you can just remove the brake line. 
10 millimeter flare nut wrench. Tap it back and forth. Try to free it up. There we go. I'm just gonna let it hang out over here. Next is gonna be the two bolts, 10 millimeter in size, that hold on the wheel cylinder. Let's break those free. Can't see them. These shouldn't be extremely tight and hopefully not very rusty. There we go. Let's get these out of here. There it is. Grab a little hammer. If yours is stuck, tap the wheel cylinder. There it is. I'm just gonna grab a pry bar now. Try to break it free from here. Uh, the shoes are still kind of pushing in on it, but you can pry them out of the way like that. And there it is. At this point, you wanna take a pry bar. I mean, if your backing plate is in good condition, then don't worry about it, but mine is pretty rusty, so I'm gonna make sure that there are no big chunks here. It looks okay. Just gonna scrape off around it. If you need to sand it down for some reason, go ahead, just be careful if you're using a power tool to sand it. You don't wanna hit anything else around here or chew through too much material. This looks all right, I'm not too worried about that. I will, however, take a little piece of sandpaper and just clean out the inner bore of this cutout because the old wheel cylinder did form a ridge of, uh, of rust Gonna want to clean that up a little. Doesn't have to look perfect. Just want to make sure that the new one goes in nice and smooth. Okay, wipe it off with a rag, or rinse it down with brake parts cleaner, whatever you prefer. But basically, just get the area clean. Before I put the new wheel cylinder through, I'm going to apply a thin layer of anti-seize on it, just on the mounting surface to hopefully prevent it from being stuck in the future. This one came out with minimal effort, so if this ever has to be replaced again, hopefully that is the case. There we go. Take this and slide it in. As you slide it in, make sure you put it into the brake shoes accordingly. Just like that. And there you go, that's seated. Push these centered, and now this is gonna keep falling off until we bolt it on, so let's bolt it on. Start in your two mounting bolts. If they're in poor condition on the head or on the threads, Definitely replace them. You want this thing to be mounted properly. Okay, let's bottom these out. Snug them up, don't make them too tight. They are very small and you don't wanna break them inside the wheel cylinder or strip them out. torque on these two bolts, if you're able to torque them, is seven foot-pounds. Double check them. All right, those are tight. The new wheel cylinder should have come with a little cover for the um, hole where the line goes, so pop that off. Save it. These are useful to have around. And then, let's insert the line. Get that line started. Now, when you put the line in, the most difficult part is gonna be getting the fitting started, mostly because if it's not perfectly lined up, the threads won't start. So I'm trying to hold it in its position. It looks like I started it, so 
We'll find out if it doesn't thread on easily, that means it's not started. It looks like it is threading on and it's not coming back off either. So at this point, I'm just going to go in all the way. If you think that it is cross threading, pull it back out immediately because you will ruin the threads on both the fitting and the wheel cylinder. So now you need a new one of both. So you want to make sure that it's threading on smoothly. Also what you can do is with this fitting off, you can clean off the threads with a wire brush. Just make sure you don't put a lot of debris into the line. And then you can also work it back and forth to free up the fitting more. You can uh, spray some more rust penetrant on there and uh, get it to spin smoothly. At this point, mine, my fitting is getting snug. So I'm going to give it a little extra. That's about it right there. You just have to uh, squish down the flared end of the line. And uh, if you feel that it's good, basically at most a quarter of a turn after it bottoms out. This is getting nice and tight here. So I'm just going to stop here. At this point, we can uh, open up the bleeder screw since we're here. We will have to gravity bleed this wheel cylinder, so we might as well do that now. Before we open up the bleeder screw, you can pop the cover off, but you want to release the brake pedal first if you used a pry bar to hold it down. That way when it releases, it doesn't pull air in through this bleeder screw. And once it is released, we can remove this and let the bleeder uh, push out all the air on the line. Release the pry bar setup. Brake pedal should pull back up. Remove your pry bar. Now pop the bleeder screw cover off. And use a 10 millimeter socket or wrench and open up the bleeder screw. At this point, we're just going to do a gravity bleed. Light gravity, pull fluid out. It's going to obviously pull the air with it. Get all the air out of the line. Once you see a clean, steady trickle of fluid coming out of the bleeder screw, we'll close it off and then you would want to perform a full manual brake bleed. And, but until then, we're just going to wait for the gravity bleed and eventually we'll see some fluid dripping out of here. There we go. That didn't take too long. We have clean fluid dripping out of the bleeder screw. So at this point, I'm going to close this off so we can finish up our installation here. You don't want to bleed these with the drum open. If you push on the brake pedal at this point with no drum on it, it will expand the shoes to the point where the wheel cylinder will literally pop open. So we're going to try to avoid that. So I'm going to put everything back together and then at the end we can do a brake bleed. Now let's contract the shoes, put them back to where they were. I'm going to use a screwdriver to push on this lever here. This is the self adjuster lever. So you don't have to get it perfect. They will self adjust, but you should probably get them as close as you can. If you counted the threads when you started, that would be best. If not, I'm going to show you exactly how to adjust them properly. For now, just give this a bunch of turns until you get it back to approximately where it was. There we go. My adjuster was about here. I'm obviously reusing shoes, hardware, the drum and everything. So I'm going to try and get it close. Everything should be worn in to about this adjustment. Uh, at this point, I'm going to clean up the hub surface here, but I will go over how to properly adjust them in a second. If your hub surface or the axle surface looks like it's in poor condition, sand it down. I'm going to use a very uh, gentle sanding pad to just knock off the, the rust here. It is a little bit raised and I don't want to put the drum on like this uh, because any imperfection in the seating of the drum will then transfer to the wheel. You want this nice and flat. Also focus on this ridge here. So if you want to just use a wire brush, if yours is very light, uh, the, the rust that is just lightly scuff it up or, you know, remove the rust. Clean it off with some brake parts cleaner. I'm going to use some anti-seize and apply a thin layer of it to prevent rust and corrosion from building up again. Try to avoid getting it on the threads of the lug studs. Just get it on the surface here of the, the face of the axle, the hub surface. And uh, a thin layer is all you want because if you put too much, it'll squish out when the drum goes on, the wheel gets torqued down, then it'll get on the braking surface of the drum and obviously that would be a big issue. So just put a thin layer on. This should prevent 
pretty much all the rust that uh, was here from building up. And also, I like to go on this ridge here. This will help the wheel not seize on as well as the drum. There we go. Now let's install the drum. If the back side of it, where it mounts on the hub, is dirty and corroded, clean it up. That way it can mount flush. When you slide this on, if it doesn't fit, obviously push the shoes further in. And at this point, to know that it's properly adjusted, you want to just barely hear the shoes touch. What you're hearing here is the shoes just barely touching on the drum. If they're too far out, not only will the drum not go on, but it's actually going to wear out the brakes faster and it will overheat. If they're too far in, you're going to have extended brake pedal travel, which can be unsafe. So adjust them accordingly. This would be the point where you would do the manual brake bleed, and that would consist of having an assistant in the vehicle, pumping up the brake pedal, holding pressure. While they're holding pressure, use your 10 millimeter wrench or socket. Break this free. As soon as the pedal hits the floor, just close this off and repeat the procedure until you have no air bubbles and clean fluid coming out of here. At that point, clean up your mess, cap this off, and let's install the wheel. Let's install the wheel. Thread on all five lug nuts, and then in a cross pattern, we're gonna snug them up. Torque these to 83 foot-pounds in a cross pattern. We'll check them all. And if your truck had this cap, put it back on. There you have it. Take it for a test drive. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.